you can see here there are 5 members in the problem. Fluctual agility is taken as 1, E i y and E i z as same as E i, J x torsional constant is 0.25 of E i, E a is again 0.25 of E i, length of the member you can see here we already said that. Four three four three six. So we have the same thing here. Four three four three six. Okay. Number of joints will be obviously six. There are five members. Then we also enter the coordinates of this matrix. That is zero six zero. You can see here zero six zero four six zero etc. We enter this here. So zero six zero. Okay. Then the direction cosine matrix for each member. There are five members. So let us enter this direction cosine matrix. We already have it here. 1 0 0 1 0 0 and so on let us enter that here 1 0 0 1 0 0 and so on you can see that here the direction cosines. Then we also ensure the type of transformation 1 here represents y z x transformation and 2 represents z y x transformation ok. So, all are 1 4 members the fifth member is 2. Then the psi angle is entered, you see here the psi angle has been calculated 0, 0, 0, 0, 90 degree. So, we entered that here 0, 0, 0, 0, 90 degree. Okay. Then the direction cosine matrix C, C matrices for all the members, you know it is 3 by 3 matrix. Okay. So, we know that we have already computed the matrix here 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, diagonal ones. Okay. So, we entered that here 1 0 0 0 1 0 for C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4. For C 5 it is different. For C 5 it is 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0. So, 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 0. Okay. <coughs> there are 12 understand degrees <coughs> okay. and there are remaining 24 is restrained degree. Then the labels are understand degree 1 to 12, then 13 to 36. For each member, we introduce the labels. I think this is the same procedure what we have in the previous example. You can easily follow these labels. Then we worked out the total stiffness matrix. Okay. Then found the transformation matrix for each member. Then enter the type of transformation then found out the stiffness coefficients, then found the stiffness matrix for each member the local stiffness matrix. Okay. Then we found the global stiffness as k bar is T transpose k T we did that okay. k global we assemble this get the total stiffness matrix then from that we plugged out the unrestrained stiffness matrix the unrestrained stiffness matrix alone okay we plugged out k u u then we found out k u u inverse okay then we create the joint load vector you can see a 0 0 minus 60 which is corresponding to what we have here 0 0 minus 60 and so on we exactly have that here okay so it's entered then we found out del u so, in this line we got unrestrained displacements. Of course, the EI multiplier is there in all the entire case. Okay. We found del u, then we found the <coughs> member end forces for each member for member 1, member 2, member 3, member 4 and member 5. So, there is a line here. Okay. The program continues from here, it goes here. Okay, member 5, then we found the entire joint forces. So, the results are like this type 1, member 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, we have entered we got the psi angles. Okay. We also got the type of transformation and now for each member we have got the local stiffness matrix, there is a multiplier E i here, then the global stiffness matrix and the labels are of course entered as per the order what we already have for each member for member 1, for member 2 okay. you can see here it is 12 by 12 okay. and this is k global which will be 
actually k global is T transpose k local T. We obtain this, this is for member 3 okay, and this is k global for member 3. There is an E A multiplier here, k local for member 4, there is an E A multiplier, k global for member 4, k local for member 5 and k global for member 5. So, now we have got the global stiffness matrices so of the 5 members we assemble them and get the total stiffness matrix which is 36 by 36. This is from column 1 to 12, then this is from 13 to 24 and this is from 25 to 36 the total matrix. Okay. Of course, in all these cases there is an EA multiplier which I want you to understand there is an EA multiplier, okay. there is an EA multiplier. So, now I have the total k global of the entire which is 36 by 36. Now, we know very clearly that this k global will have unrestrained degrees of this is unrestrained, this is restrained, unrestrained, unrestrained, this is 12 by 12, okay. this is 36 by 36 the remaining. So, this can be now inverted. Okay. So, I got the invert of this now, this unrestrained stiffness matrix which has been taken out, okay. there is an E i multiplier, there is an inverse of this where 1 by E i will be there, okay. then the joint load vector is displayed here which was an input for the problem, then we have the del u. Okay. So, del u will have 1 by E i as a multiplier. Okay. Once we get del u, we use a standard equation, find the global end moments of member 1, member 2, member 3, member 4 and then member 5. Okay. Once we get this, we find the end joint forces of whole structural system from degrees of freedom starting from 1 to 36 ok. We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So, we have a vector of 36 1. I want to plot this and show you the result ok. Let us do it for member wise. do this for this member separately ok and this member separately. So, now degree of freedom 1 starts from here ok you can see a degree of freedom starts from here. So, along x along y and along z ok that is how we are going to label this right we are going to interpret the results like that. So, along x along y is 0 I am not marking the 0 values I am only marking the uh, known values. So, let us say for this member it is going to be 21.028 and this is going to be 16.364 and for this it is going to be 39.90 for this member it is going to be downward 21.028 and this is going to be 16.364 and this is going to be 44.215 for the member. Next member for this it is going to be 36.412 and here it is 36.412 and this is going to be 21.818 
and this is going to be 21.818 and this value is going to be 51.739 and this is 57.496. <coughs> Let us do for this member, this value is going to be 57.44, and 7.524. Similarly, at this joint it is 62.56. And thirty eight point one eight and seven point eight three five. So, for this member twenty two point nine seven eight, twenty two point nine seven eight and 16 16.36 16.36 43.56 48.348 and for the last member 39.58 39.58 that is the final end moments. Okay. So, now interestingly the total reaction, the total reaction makes the total downward load and you can see the compatibility for example, take this joint okay, 44 anti clockwise okay, 7 anti clockwise that is about y axis right, which makes 51 clockwise and so on. Okay. So, one can see the compatibility this is the final end moments we have final reactions. So, friends we have solved a 3 D space frame problem using computer code. Okay. We are able to use the input data properly to run the program and obtain the results understood the sign convention of the results and they are plotted okay. and checked for compatibility. So, friends I would urge you that you should try to do some more problems on your own derive the input data as required from the problem from the local axis alignments and try to solve use this computer program and see how you can solve them very easily and conveniently. So, friends you will realize now that whatever program we have given you as an input data the algorithm the pattern of analysis using stiffness method has never changed for 2 D orthogonal frames. 2D non orthogonal, 2D truss members and non orthogonal truss members, 3D we have the same algorithm continuing and therefore, there is a complete iterative scheme available. So, that the program can be easily done using MATLAB and you can solve the problems by hand as well as by computer coding. I hope you enjoy this 
and you will try this program as an input data of a variety of problems which are available in tutorial sheets in the coming days and weekends for you to solve the problem. We are also giving you the solutions of the problem. I hope you will try to have a new facet of understanding 3D analysis using these lectures. Thank you very much.